order to describe Boma, I'd like to go back a little bit. Um, I think probably my work that's most relevant is for the last uh, 12 to 15 years, I've really been focused on working for both for-profit and non-profit companies around de developing systems and global networks and products that scale to deliver both profit and impact. And about 10 years ago, I was hired by the TED conference to think about how to take TED, which was a very high touch conference out into the world. And so I started to think about a framework of how we could actually um, expand TED in a different kind of way, in a way that was more open. And over the summer of 2008, de developed a framework that was a free license and a set of rules and guidelines um, around the ability for anybody based on trust to license the TED brand and create a TED-like event. And this framework we launched in March 2009 and it became TEDx. And in the first year we saw, we didn't really know, it was definitely very experimental. Um, and there were definitely a lot of people who felt strongly that this was going to damage the brand forever. But we took a chance and in the first year we had about 250 events that happened around the world. And last year I think there were about 3,000 events that are now happening, TEDx events that are happening on an annual basis based on this free license and the sense of trust. From my own personal journey, um, I wanted to really figure out the next piece of the systems change which was much more focused on how do we drive real impact in the world rather than just inspiration. And we have a saying that we now use at BOMA which is so what, now what? And really all of what we're trying to design in the future is centered around this idea of how on all levels of the BOMA system do we drive um, impact and change. After TEDx being interested in trying to figure out the impact piece, I was recruited at some point by Peter Diamandes and he wanted me to come to one of his companies to try to figure out how to take it global. And I thought it'd be an interesting thing to experiment with this volunteer platform that I'd built for TEDx and try to figure out in a decentralized way if I could rebuild the volunteer network, but also build a decentralized for-profit network that could help sustain the impact initiatives. Because really, um, one of the learnings, as I said, coming out of TEDx, was it's very hard to sustain a volunteer global network and you see many, much attrition and people, you know, dropping, very um, highly qualified people dropping out of, this, of the network. Then after a couple of years at being at Singularity University, um, really wanted to step back to try to figure out if I could design this kind of framework um, from the ground up. So I reached out to a couple of partners that had been along with me on this journey for the last 12 to 15 years. And so I reached out to them to start a conversation about could we start a global brand from the ground up, a global brand that really would represent the kind of systems change we want to see in the world, which is the kind of change where it's decentralized, it's agile, it's a smart learning platform, and where we're really taking all stakeholders along with us. That includes corporations, governments, communities, youth, NGOs, and um, educational institutions. And so we started working on what a framework like this could and should and might look like. And um, we're in the process of launching a new global network, which is very much this decentralized learning network that is driven by local partners, but is being executed on a global scale. And um, really exciting for um, the uh, next generation of the systems change network. So we are living in very complicated times and it's not just about technological change like artificial intelligence or AI or robotics or biochemistry or medicine, but there are really all these vectors coming together, geopolitical change, social change, economic change, um, and we're seeing because of Moore's law the rapidly, the, how all this is speeding up in ways that we are that look very different to the past. Our traditional institutions are models that are very top-down models that were designed for um, a sort of a command and control center and they work very efficiently in a world where it's all top-down. But at the same time, we're seeing this rise of open source, decentralization, creative commons, the maker movement, blockchain, 
and this concept of how we're putting everything on the blockchain in a very decentralized and open way. And these two forces, this real top-down command and control of our traditional organizations and our traditional governments and our traditional institutions, of, there's a lot of tension between that and this new sort of open source and, um, you know, open-driven um, movement. And so the tension you're seeing um, in leadership is a combination of this radical change and this opening up of systems and, um, and several other forces that are all converging inside corporations, including the need often to retrain work, the workforce because of automation. And so corporates are having to deal with a lot of change right now and you layer on top of that a um, responsibility to drive positive impact on the planet. And um, we are, there, there's a lot of change that they have to embrace. And so they're not really structured for that kind of change. And so what we want to do at BOMA is create a new sort of leadership model that really gives them the compass to help them work through um, this, this change and also help them think about how they can um, deliver positive impact on the planet. Technology at the end of the day is just a tool and I think the um, narrative that it's just all about technolo technological change is a very simplistic narrative and it's a narrative that a lot of people put forward but it really doesn't do justice to the complexity of the moment. And so BOMA what we really are looking at is how do we really embrace this true complexity of this moment that we have right now and how do we take all stakeholders with us? How do we ask the hard questions and embrace the kinds of um, real complexity that we're going to need to solve and to solve the very difficult questions we have coming up and how do we do this both on a deeply local and a global level. If we're a tiny planet and the world gets smaller, if we think of a lot of the issues that we are facing right now, many of the questions and many of the problems we have to solve for have to be solved both on a deeply local and at a global level. So what kind of an agile network can we build? What kind of decentralized network can we build to start to have some of these conversations and take action? I'll give you one example. In the future, if I decide I have three children, if I was having a fourth child and I could create my designer baby and I could take the best of me and my husband and roll, them up, roll, roll him and her up into a child, would I decide to do it? And that woman sitting in the shanty town in Kibera, would she have access to that same kind of technology to be able to do that? I think not. And what if the US government decided, you know what, we're going to ban this technology? No, you can't genetically engineer your child in that way and create your little best of my husband and I uber species. But China decided that was completely fine. And they were then able to move forward creating, um, you know, designer children of the future. Who's governing some of these choices? Where are we even having that conversation that is both on a local level and a global level? I think within the corporate training mold, we need a mind shift and we need to find a way to train our leaders of the future to really be courageous leaders, to embrace the agility that they're going to need to make decisions based on the rate of change right now and really think about how they can not only, proc um, not only maximize for shareholder value, but also maximize for um, based on other values. Um, you know, their employee values, the kind of values they want to see put out in the world and really drive positive change on other levels beyond just maximizing for profit. And this is very hard, a very hard um, process to drive home because as we know, corporates have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. They're required right now to maximize for shareholder value and so it's going to take a very different kind of leadership and a very courageous group of leaders to say enough is enough we have over the last 50 years really decimated the planet in certain ways and we need to think differently about the future that we're creating for our children i really want to use this moment in time to step back and think about based on the fact that I have two girls, how I could use my experience to help contribute to this moment in time. And so I started volunteering for Women's March Global and then took over as the executive director. I could build structures that would allow the grassroots to connect to each other and the grassroots to connect to each other around issues that they keep care deeply about. I would like to believe we're moving towards 
towards a world where my daughters would be able to work, walk into any workplace in the future and have the ex exact same respect or garner the exact same respect as their male counterparts. I feel like we've got a really long way to go. And while I've never, I always look at the glass being half full and I've tried to never notice the glass ceiling, as I've gotten older, there have been moments in time where it's become more difficult to ignore. I recently had a job in Silicon Valley and it was probably the most difficult job I'd ever had in my whole life because the sexism isn't blatant. It's very um, um, sort of still waters run deep. And so I'm at a point in my life where I you know, support women unequivocally and I mentor women unequivocally. But I'd like to believe that we were gonna, we're moving towards a future where men and women are just equal. I think it goes back to this concept of systems change and I don't think it's just about cultural change. I think we also have to head it on on a systems change level. And I think we have to look at some of the models like they're using in the Nordic countries where they're mandating that 40% of boards be all women by a certain time because it is all trickle down. And so if you put the woman on those boards and you mandate that some of those women will then suggest you know, CEOs for future positions and they will support other women. And so we need to try to build the scaffolding from the top down that allows for women to be supported in the workplace. And if we're not finding a way to create these structures that allow for that, that change is never really going to happen. At BOM, we're developing curriculum to think about leadership in a different way. Think about courageous leadership and how does a leader have to lead in the future. And it's not just about business as usual. It's about how do we maximize for shareholder value while also driving positive impact on the planet. It's about how do we embrace this radical digital, digitalization um, while at the same time understanding that we need to move away from these, this top-down corporate structure into a more open, agile um, management style. And then the youth of today are demanding that we think differently about how we, um, the, their journey inside of a corporation. They want, to be, they want to be driven by a meaningful existence and they want their jobs to bring some meaning to their lives. And therefore, corporations are going to have to think a little differently about their, their corporate culture if they want to hire the best, best young people and stay competitive. Because these young people really do want to have a job that gives meaning to their lives and they want to believe that their, the company that they're working for is doing their job to drive a more um, responsible future. And so a lot of what the Boma um, Institute is going to be driving are leadership programs that think about how do we, tr how do we train these future leaders.